Hello, welcome back to Star Citizen and day six of the expo where we're actually being graced with a you know with, with a manufacturer that, ac that actually has a lot of ships and in addition to that we even have two halls because apparently they didn't manage to fit all of the Aegis Dynamics uh, ships into, the, into just one hall. This is actually the second hall. I was just in the first hall and there was nothing there. So um, let's start with the, with the second one and hope that uh, CIG sorts it out in, in, in the meantime. It's basically four minutes after after it started. That one, I think that should be the Eclipse, right? Stealth bomber thingy? Right, you're an Eclipse. You are. Cool. I'm actually gonna rent it because I want to try out that stealth bomber for, you know, it's stealth bombery aspects. I don't think it's worth buying, really, from what I know, but um, I would really want to take a look at it. If it lets me, thank you. God damn it, Moby Glass. Get your shit together. Yeah, a bomber designed to get it and strike before it's ever spotted. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like, an in sounds like a pretty interesting idea, you know? Have a stealth bomber that just obliterates targets with it with the few torpedoes it, it it has and probably is already on the way out when the target realized that it's that it's actually a target. So I think that sounds one of the concepts that should work, but I really don't have any experience with the torpedo bomber, so um I kind of withhold my judgment there. I did use torpedoes recently while um, taking a 600 series for a spin for a week by just renting it in-game. And torpedoes were fun, you know? No doubt about that, but um, if just a ship just based on torpedoes is gonna work, I don't know. But I think it has more powerful torpedoes than the size 5 I was using. Alright, and here this looks like a Vanguard, right? Safety, no, god dang. Thank you I'm pretty sure it had a different paint job at some point. But this is actually a, re a retaliator, another, you know, bomber, if you want to call it that. A long range anti capital ship bomber. Um, which is, you know, theoretically is a pretty, pretty interesting idea. The point. The reason why I have some issues with this ship is that it's really big for what it does, you know, take care of, 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 of enemy capital ships. It isn't shielded quite as well as it probably should be. I think it has medium shields, I think too, but I might be mistaken. And if you look at the size, you probably see a glaring weakness of this vessel is that with its medium shields, it's not got enough shield power to, to basically just deter fighters just by having an awesome strong shield and in order to deal with fighters that does have turrets like it has one here I think it also got two on the back I think on also on top of the vessel there's two turrets in the back apparently there's also one down below maybe it's actually just one on top let's actually try and find our way in let's let's take some time today it's a pretty decent lineup that we got here this looks like a torpedo bay and not, not an entrance. This might be an entrance. Hmm? It's been a while since I've been on one of these. I'm pretty sure there was supposed to be an entrance around here somewhere. I guess not. Huh. But where else would an entrance be? Maybe this? Ah! Whoa, 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 whoa. Not, not the rent button. I'm not intentionally renting it. Kind of the problem that this ship has is fighter craft are way too effective at taking it down. I mean, theoretically it has three turrets, but those turrets are just two size two guns, which, you know... And Aurora has about the same amount of firepower, and with the, and with how turret gameplay it currently is, it's really not um, scaring any fighter. I think I even saw a video recently by someone just fighting one of these just with a single Gladius, and 
the people in there had no chance of shooting the gladius because it's way too maneuverable. We're gonna be taking a look at the gladius later, by the way, I think. Um, and, you know, it's just way too big. It's it's an easy target to hit for a fighter craft. Yeah, it has this huge torpedoes in here, of course. And then access to turrets. I think one should probably be here. Not a turret? thought this should be a turret. Pretty sure there should be a turret here. And there's one in the center here. Lower turret, okay. And there's another upper turret back here, I believe. And then we also saw the lower turret in the front of the ship. So it does have lots it, it does have a lot of, of turret coverage, but the but the size two but the size two turrets are really no deterrent against fighter craft. So kind of the only thing that turrets currently can do, in my opinion, is to have additional firepower for the main vessel to deal with bigger ships. So that you put some, you know, you you put some ballistic guns on there, probably Gatlings are kind of the best gun you can put on a turret because it's easy to use for for your turret gunner and it also is capable of do, of, of doing damage to to, 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 to large ships. But um, against fighter, but, but having turrets as, as kind of something to deal with fighter craft, they don't really work well. All right, but as you can see, it's a beautiful ship, nice interior and all that, but uh, it's really, it doesn't really work well against any sort of fighter cover. Now I just need to find my way back out again. Oh dear. should be here, right? This is where we came in, I believe. Alright. So, beautiful ship, but way too fragile and way too vulnerable to fighter craft, so I think either uh, they should either increase the turret guns to at least size 3. Size 3 at least feels good when you hit, and even if you don't hit much, you know, it's still a little scary to fighters. But um, just two size twos is not enough. Two size threes, maybe even, maybe even a little bit more than that. But you know, you don't just want to have a single gun that always that, that, that feels a little bit weird in, in, in turret. And four size three is probably a little bit too much. I mean, four size two would also probably feel interesting. But um, it's just not good enough. Or they need to implement something similar to gimbal assist that people in a turret can use, which kind of takes out. The skill of, um, of of turret gameplay, but um, at least it makes the ship effective against you know fighter craft, which supposedly shouldn't sh shouldn't have an easy job dealing with a bomber like this. Uh, speaking of fighter craft cover, it uh, moves over nicely to this big boy here, to the hammerhead, which is a really fun ship to use if you have like enough people to actually man it, because it, you need a pilot down there. Then it has four turrets on the side, I think it also has a turret on the upper side of the ship and on the lower side of the ship. So you can, you, you, so, so you have something to do for like seven people. So it's, it's, it's really fun to use, but if you ever tried it in, you know, combat scenario against people in fighter craft, you'll easily find out that, yeah, the shield is strong enough in this case to just be able to deal with one fighter craft. But as soon as there's a multiple, they might eventually pierce through, and if they have ballistics, they might even pierce through your your shield before that. And again, even though the ship has, I, I, I believe those are four size twos, if I'm not mistaken. I don't believe it's four size threes. That sounds a little bit insane, but four size twos for for each turret, which is quite a bit of firepower. But again, with the turrets being uh, with the turrets having issues to just hit something, it's still not quite good enough and it's, it's it's a shame because this is supposed to be your you, so, sort of you know your anti-fighter cover corvette and it really doesn't do a very good job at that to be honest because it's just not very efficient at taking on fighters if they don't want to mess with the targeting system of the turret it might also help if at some point we would get something similar to, you know, if we want to have a World War II um, simulation in space, something closer to, you know, um, flag guns would 
would also work. You know, guns that don't just uh, do damage in a single spot, but do damage over a huge area. We're already halfway there with our scatter guns, but the scatter guns do not have enough range for in, in, in order to deal with with fighter craft on uh, on a ship as big as this. And also, you know, they have a really small ammo supply that you really can't afford using it on on a ship of this size because you would basically be needing to re refuel our, uh, uh, after every two after every two fighters you killed but if it was a, spe a, a special gun that wasn't really usable on fighter craft but you know just gave a ship something like that it might also make things easier without making it you know extremely easy and just you know just having to vaguely look in one direction and just hold the left mouse button f to eventually kill a fighter craft so I don't know it's kind of my ideas to deal with uh, the current turret issue, but I would also be interested in your opinions on that matter. And here we have the Avenger family. I did a recent, I did do a video on that recently. Well, this is the Stalker, which has an EMP, also because it's a bounty hunting ship. The Stalker is a bounty hunting ship, or with an EMP? Wait, what was the name of the others? That was a regular one. War no, the Warlock was the one with the EMP. Um, the Stalker is just the one with a small cell within it. So let's actually take a quick look inside. As you can see, instead of the cargo room here in the back, you have these, you know, small prison cells that you can just um, put the people that you knocked out and then you want to bring in for, uh, um, for a bounty somewhere. So that's nice, because it's a bounty hunting ship. It's also slightly faster than most other ships, which has, as I discussed with the Hawk recently, has the added advantage that, you know, you can actually interdict people, especially if they're planet side and can't just use their quantum drive to jump away. Uh, still, I think, I think bounty hunting ships would need something similar to what, um, to, 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 to what the Mantis has. Basically, have some device that might not be able to pull things out of quantum travel, but is it? But is it? But it? At, but is it? Is at least capable of you know, building up an an inhibitor field to stop your prey from just going to from just going to um, to use quantum drive, make um, ideally make the range really small, like just a thousand meters or something, and that way you need to stay close to your prey, but you would be able to just prevent them from just jumping away, and I think. Having something like that would make bounty hunting a lot more interesting because you can better dictate your engagements because right now it's often um, kind of difficult to just get a hold of people because people are always jumping from point A to point B and you don't know where they're going next in advance so you're, you're always trailing in behind them and then when you do eventually catch up you start fighting them and then they're just oh no I'm getting attacked slow <laughs> Quickly, we need to jump away again, and then you're somewhere far away, and you're really in no way of just um, of just catching up to them, realistically. So, um, I think bounty hunting ships would need something like this, some way for them to temporarily, and you know, with use of some skill, to be able to 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 to, to deny their their prey to be able to get away, and just having higher speed than all other ships just doesn't cut it in my opinion because most of our engagements are going to take place in space and you need some way to deal with ships that just um, randomly try to quantum jump away. Anyway, the Warlock here has an EMP device which you know could be could also be used for bounty hunting I guess because you could just disable ships and then just go over there which um, the bounty hunting vessel doesn't have an EMP it just has these cells and if you want to disable a vessel and then just board it you probably need to install guns that kind of disable the ship which currently don't work properly so kind of if you put these two together in a small wing and also add a mantis to it you have a group that's theoretically capable of actually doing some real bounty hunting but you're kind of like uh, investing the manpower of three people just to take one person down probably and I don't think it's worth it. We need some sort of platform that we can do it with, you know, two ships at, at the very at, 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 at the very least. And so far, it's not really there because the Mantis, it does have quantum interdiction capabilities, but it can't kill anything. 
So you would need then, in addition to the Mantis, you would need at least one vessel to disable it. Maybe, maybe the Stalker, but the Stalker doesn't have prison cells. As uh, the, the Warlock, the Warlock doesn't have prison cells. It just has EMP to to, to potentially disable the ship. But that's about it. So it's kind of it's kind of in a bit of a messy state, bounty hunting. I feel. And this is the Titan Renegade, which has a loadout focus for Arena Commander for some reason. I think it just has gimbals on all weapons by default and some nice machine gun in the front, so... It's a nice ship, it's just... As, as far as I see it, it's just a straight upgrade from the regular Avenger Titan. So if you like the Avenger Titan and if you want to just uh, add some, some more bucks into the game, then... The Titan Renegade is probably not a bad option, but also the... The, the Titan itself is a pretty good ship for most purposes, so there's really no point in uh, in there's there's really no reason in in me selling that ship short. It does a pretty decent job and all that. All right, let's now move on to the first room. We do do need to get back to the elevator. I'm also interested in doing a video about the Hammerhead at some point, but um, it's always difficult to find enough people to man it, and then once you have those those people, it's kind of debatable what you actually want to do with that. When we just had one drug lab, you know, that kind of kind of served this, this ship really well, because you could just park it there and could basically control that area to some extent. But um, ever since we have multiples of those, and people can just can just choose to, to go and buy their drugs elsewhere, it's really not that much of a point. Oh, I see the ships have finally loaded in here. Great! Good! Alright, uh, I did already talk, talk, about, talk about the Gladius, basically um, the old gold standard of um, light fighter craft and it's still really good. You know what? This is the Valiant variant, I think the Valiant has... Uh, Custom livery and also supposedly it's better in Arena Commander by I don't know. This looks like Omni Sky. Omni Sky is really not a very good weapon, but I think it also just has gimbal weapons by default, while the no while the regular Gladius doesn't. This is just a regular Gladius, right? Right. I'm actually gonna rent a Valiant just to try it out, because I have flown Gladius before, but. Uh, I haven't done it with these. And the Gladys is still doing pretty fine, you know? If you gimbal all weapon slots, you have basically three size two guns, which is... Sorry. Which is good enough to deal with fighter craft, and because of the Gladys' superior maneuverability, you can deal with fighter craft pretty effectively. And if you put in the right guns, you might even be able to deal with bigger ships, so... Gladius, really? Still? Good ship? No doubt about that. Um, the arrow kind of encroached on its territory a little bit, the arrow being slightly smaller. But recently with the um, hashtag fix um, of just removing the shields, on, uh, just, just removing one of the two shields that the arrow had, um, the Gladius now has superior shield power. The Gladius always had more missiles trapped to the hull, so you could always just... Uh, Help yourself in, in engagements that way. And also one factor that you often forget is that uh, the Gladius is supposed to be one of the main ships in Squadron 42, so you'll also already be able to gain some familiarity with those ships in, by, while playing Squadron 42. And because of that, um, it's also being actively developed on all the time, and it's always one of the first ships that gets new, new heads-up displays and stuff like that, so if, if CIG messes up the Gladius, then, you know, the sky is really falling, so if you have a Gladius, you're probably always safe in terms of combat, so it makes it for a really decent choice if you just want to have your your fallback go-to combat ship and not to worry about much of anything else. Yeah, anyway, let's move over here. I did recently make videos about the Vanguard. These actually are Vanguards this time, and not, the, not a ret retaliator. Uh, Vanguards also have various ver various variants, like Sentinel I think has electronic warfare capability, so right now that really doesn't do anything. 
Then over here we have the Harbinger. Uh, the Harbinger is supposed to have torpedoes, I think? Also seems like it has big ballistic weapons instead of just lasers, which might also help. So it's probably better in the in the anti-cap ship strike craft role. You know, not cap ship, but in the role against large vessels, which I think the Vanguard is pretty good at, even even in the PU. It's just it has issues dealing with you know regular fighter craft. Is what kind of the main problem of um, of the Vanguard is. In my opinion, the Warden we did already try out in my Vanguard video recently, so I don't need to talk about that. And the Hoplite... I think it has a drop... I, I, I think it's supposed to be functioning as a dropship on top of all things. And I think since they have these new fancy entrances that have no concern for where you need to get in, I'm not sure if we can actually get in, but I think it has, you know, additional jump seats for marines to just sit tight until you god dang it until you have to drop them off somewhere so let's try that again this time let's just pop on on here and yeah it has additional seats all right still has the turret i believe does it still have the turret, I believe? I believe it still has the turret, but I'm not entirely certain where the seat... Ah, this, it's, it's here, okay. It just probably moves out into the open here. Which is a bit of a weird arrangement that you have your turret gunner just... Probably this moves up to the top, so that your turret gunner is not just sitting in front of all of your, all of your marines, but it's still a very, um, well... Uncomfortable loadout, I think. Alright. Then on our right, we have the Reclaimer. Uh, kind of a large ship that um, deals with salvage. It can use salvage stuff, pick up things with this huge... Um, with this huge arm that you can see down here. And then make it into scrap metal and transport it some places. Which is all a good idea and all that. But the whole salvage mechanic really isn't in the game yet. And... It does have some cargo space, but it's a huge vessel to just do some, some 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 amount of trading with. It does have a pretty nice interior and all that, so no doubt about that. It does have some interesting things, and also one of the things I, ra I really like is that um, on the top floor... Uh, let's actually go in there later. But I'd probably want to end the episode there, so let's um, let's hold that thought and talk about the sabers over here really quick. Um, the saber, the currently still the king of dock fighting fighter craft, I believe. Um, just based on the fact that it has three shields, which no other fighter craft has, it's and it's still maneuverable enough to be able to deal with um, just um, with just fixed weapons. And with fixed weapons, it has four size three guns, which is pretty impressive. For, sh for ship that size. That over there is the EMP variant, the Raven, that uh, I think you can't normally get. It's just kind of a sponsored deal thing that uh, they sold those. It j they just have two guns, but they have, an e but have an EMP device and all that. So, Saber, still pretty good. Stealthy, maneuverable, good shields. Some people think it should even have better shields, but that's, that's, a, that's, a, little bit, that's a little bit crazy talk. And it also... Unlike all other fighter craft, it also has two power plants, which, you know, some fighter craft would really need, like the Hornet we discussed at some point, especially the Super Hornet, and the Hawk, and several other fighter craft that I neglect to mention here. So, this ship, this ship has it all, you know, it's just... If you're looking to get a dogfighter and can't decide on what you want, then the Sabre is probably, probably a very, very valid choice. All right, now let's go into the reclaimer. I do need to find the entrance though. Yeah, the one on the back is always a possibility. Question is that they build a ramp so we can actually access it. Okay, we don't need it with the elevator. I see. All right, well, the re reclaimer really is 
a capital ship in just not name and size. It, it, it has a very beautiful interior, multiple levels. So let's actually, I don't know, go to habitation deck, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Most of the levels aren't very interesting because one is the hall where the salvage goes to, you know, and one is the hall where your regular freight goes to, which, you know, is kind of, yeah, I know, it's supposed to be there. But um, I think the main interesting things are in the habitation area here. Where we have access to side airlocks. I think there's also a sub deck down here. Oh, it's... It's lagging quite a bit here. No, not... Don't go up on the wall again. In the sub deck it does have the engine room and en engineering compartments and stuff, you know. And then let's head back to the main level. The main level also has some pretty nice rooms, like I think these are the captains. No, these are just crew quarters. But you know, with bathrooms, someone um, made a mess here though. Oh dear. Who decided to make a mess here in the bathroom, huh? Wasn't me. I, I, I swear, guys, wasn't me. No captain's quarters is over here. Right, so you have this big desk and, you know, your own quarters and bathroom and stuff, you know? Everything you really need. It's just... It's still a little bit dirty-ish, but you know, it's a salvage operation ship, so uh, I think it can get away with, you know, not looking like, uh, like an origin ship. But if we head further to the front... We'll get to the tech room here. And then moving on further, we're about to get on up to the bridge. Do we actually want to get to the bridge? I think we can also just use a ladder to get to the bridge. But let's use the elevator. Where is the panel? Oh, that over here. The bridge is really nice and that's what I wanted to go here is this um, apparatus here which has you know access points for up to four people where you can remotely man the turrets so if we go that's a scanning station actually not a turret if we go in here Unless they disabled all that, which is entirely possible. I guess they disabled those systems. Didn't... Uh, that's a shame. Anyway, um, by just standing in one of these turret stations, you can also just remotely access all the other ones, uh, as, as long as they're not used by someone. So, if you see that um, whatever target you're shooting at is moving out of your... your out of the... Uh, uh, out of the um, area that your that your turret can fire at, you can just say, "Okay, I'm gonna move on to this one." Then, ah, I see it from here, and just continue firing, which you know makes it a little bit better than the hammerhead, for instance, where everybody is in just manned turrets and basically has to stay put where they are because you because it will take you a while to just get out of your seat, then wait until the animation is over, then you need to go run into the hall, maybe run through half of the ship to get to that other turret and then go in there and then maybe the target that you wanted to, to that you wanted to to pursue is already gone so they're always the the pi the pilot has to basically control the ship in an effective way so that um whatever turrets you have manned are able to bear down on the target here you can just you know you can just as 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 as, as, a, as the pilot you can just continue on flying 
and you can you can rely that your crew is gonna be able to deal with swapping through turrets automatically even if you're understaffed for uh for, for what amount of turrets the ship has i think the ship has like four turrets i think they're also pretty big but i don't but i'm not entirely 100 percent sure on the specifications of those i haven't really been in fights with it much just you know just some goofing around with some people which you know goofing around is fun but uh doesn't show you how good the ship in would be in a combat scenario, which, you know, the ship is probably not very well designed for because it's designed to come in after some combat and just um, just just pick up the the scraps loading around. But maybe you're 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 gonna get attacked doing that and you'll need some coverage. But it does have some coverage at least if it's good enough. I don't really know for sure. Anyway, that's it for today. Pretty decent, pretty decent uh, showroom floor this time. Quite a lot of interesting ships. Um, I'm probably go I, I plan to do a video about the Eclipse, maybe even the Saber, but uh, you'll see that another time. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.